21 through 24, and it's a verse that I go to a lot. And it says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. And this is really, when I started thinking about this, I started thinking about all the business owners in the house, all the upper management in the house, the people that really have to think this way. It says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Again, why would the Lord consider us, right? Like we're the lowest things at times that so we can be so selfish, so, so self-motivated, all of these things. And God still says, man, I want to consider you today. So he says, uh, his wonderful works to the children of men, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. What is the sacrifice of thanksgiving? This is what we got to remember, to be grateful for all that we have. It's very easy to forget the good things, the little things. But man, those are so big, especially when you go to other parts. Of, I went to Nicaragua one time, changed my life forever because I saw six-year-olds begging for food. And I'm thinking, man, even at my worst, I wasn't like that. Even when I was in the foster system, I wasn't like that. I wasn't on the streets, okay? I still had a bed to go to. It wasn't, wasn't the best situation. It was still better than that. And so it says, and declare his works with rejoicing, those that see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. It says, oh, it says, and declare his works, let the sacrifices sacrifice with thanksgiving, declare his works with rejoicing, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. So that's actually missing a, a verse. So uh, those go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters, who do business on great waters. And I just wanted to declare to the people in this house, especially business owners, upper management, anyone in management, this year, I believe, I believe if we're smart as believers in Christ, and if we're listening to the Father, I believe that we can do business on great waters. I believe that business owners in here have an opportunity this year to make a greater influence and a greater income than ever before. Why? Because in stiff and select markets, there's places and times that you can make deals that I believe can set you up for the greatest income of your life. Again, I will tell this to everybody I ever meet. The Holy Spirit is the greatest businessman of all time. He can give us insider trading at any time. And so for all of the business owners in here, I just declare to you that 2022 is going to be a blessed year. It's going to be a year of overflow. It's going to be a year of fat, a jubilee year, as the children of Israel called it. And I, I'm just so believing that. And yes, it's been slim pickings for 20 and 21, right? And I mean, even like the internet is full of all these memes of how bad 20 and 21 were. The reality is it doesn't have to be that way. The reality is we serve a king that's big enough Come to on. be able to make us fat in lean years. And I'm just believing that for you guys this year. So, again, I go, I go back and I just wanted to declare that to this house, that we're going to do business in deep water this year. Amen. Even for the house, that we're going to begin to tap into streams and networks and places that we've never tapped into before. Because I believe that over this house, there's an entrepreneur spirit in this house, and we're going to capitalize on those things. But I'm watching my kids open their presents, right? And, and it, if you've ever met my daughter, she's very intense. Okay, what she likes, she likes. She's a lot like her daddy, believe it or not. And she's just like <laughs> singular minded. Okay, so her and Josh are a lot alike in this way, and they're grabbing presents. And I mean, as fast as they're grabbing a present, they got it halfway open, they see inside, and they're like, next, right? Like, I ain't even got this open, but I seen it. What? Okay, cool, next. And then there's my boy Naya, right? My man Naya, he opened a present. He going to examine the present. He going to look at the present. He wants it all the way out of the box. I want to see and put my hands and feel this present because I'm living in the present, right? And he's like, he's like, oh, man, this is the greatest gift I've gotten all day because it's the one in my hand right now. And I'm watching that. And I'm going, y'all so funny. You guys are funny that, that I'm watching this unfold and I'm trying to be observant, right? Is, is I believe that God is always speaking to us. And I believe he's always speaking to us in two ways. And this is just something that I've observed in my life. He's always speaking to us through creation itself, through, through my friends, 
through my brother, through, my, through what I see in the world. That's why Solomon's always talking about, hey, consider the ant, consider the tree, consider this, consider that. Why? Because when you look in creation itself, it's speaking to us. Amen. Creation itself, it says that you will know I'm God by creation. I don't even have to explain or send Christ. That's why people are like, well, what about indigenous people? It's fine. They saw a tree and recognized they weren't big enough to create that tree. There's got to be something more. Okay. So God is always speaking to us through creation itself. And he's always speaking to us through his word. So if you say, man, I'm just not hearing God right now. I'm saying, eh, your ears ain't open. Your eyes ain't open. Because I promise you, he's speaking to you. You just may not be catching the avenue in which he's speaking to you. Again, when he sent a baby to the earth, the Romans were like, nah, that ain't God. Because that's not a king. That's just a baby, right? They were expecting Christ to show up like the second coming, wrapped in white clothes, like he's showing God big sword, big white horse. Oh, that's how Jesus is coming the first time. And he's like, no, I have to fulfill scripture, right? And so there was many a words given to fulfill scripture. So he had to walk through each and every one of those to fulfill the prophecies that were written about him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been God. Okay? Until he fulfilled all of those, he couldn't fulfill his duty as Christ because he had to fulfill all the law and the prophets first so that we could have life and life more abundant. Otherwise, it would have been an insignificant or insufficient sacrifice. He had to be a significant and sufficient sacrifice. He was the the Christ that was slain or the lamb that was slain before time itself. So everybody could live according to the blood of Christ. Okay. My righteousness isn't in me. I can't do enough. I promise you. I can't do enough. David Clowers cannot do enough to be righteous in the sight of God. And that's why he said it's like dirty rags. It's not even good enough. But through the blood of Christ, through the fact that Jesus Christ came to the earth out of heaven onto the earth, lived a perfect life, fulfilled a perfect life, became that sufficient sacrifice for all man for all time. Amen. Amen. So I'm watching them, and I'm watching Naya, and I say, man, Lord, I pray that as much as I'm always looking for the next, that I'm more like Benaiah, that I can examine and I can enjoy what I have right now in front of me. I don't have to wait. Like, you know, a, a lot of times guys are really this way. Oh, man, when my boy's 13, when my boy's a little older, when my boy is, and the reality is, man, you better enjoy right now because that ain't going to be there tomorrow, okay? Pretty soon, that that five-year-old's going to be 13. You're going to be like, okay, dude, I'm ready to slap you because <laughs> I, I feel that already with my beautiful, beautiful bride, uh, my daughter, okay? Not my bride. I don't want to slap my bride. <laughs> Love my bride. She may want to slap me, but I don't want to slap her. Uh, yeah, but with my daughter, like she's six going on 29, okay? If you've ever had a conversation with JJ, you're like, golly, child. And it's like, meh, 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 meh. People are like, man, but Naya doesn't talk much. I like, can't. <laughs> JJ talked too much. So, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm considering and I'm watching these kids and, and I, I just literally stopped back and I said, man, you know, it got to the point that Naya had like three gifts open and they were already done. He still had gifts in wrapping paper and I'm trying to give him gifts and he's like, man, mm, I don't want that. I got this right here. Dad, let me enjoy this before you try to make me move on to the next thing. And in life, man, it's so easy that we lose our wonder, that we lose our enjoyment for right now, for what we have. And I just want to declare to you, man, God wants to introduce your wonder back to you. There's a wonder about life that it's childlike. That's why God said a childlike faith. Why? Because in a childlike faith, man, I'm one in childlike faith is I need him right? My children right now cannot survive on their own. They would die. They need me. They have a faith that daddy's going to bring home some food and they're going to eat, okay? Whether it's noodles or it's steak, it doesn't matter. They need to eat something and they can't supply that on their own. Right. We're the same way. God's saying, listen, I want you to have that childlike faith because that childlike faith is what's going to cause you to be able to have that reliance on me. Because it's not of you, it's of me. 
It's not of you. It's of my son that I sent to the earth for you. Okay? So we got to run back and recognize that the wonder of our lives needs to come out of our faith for Christ. Our faith in Christ. And it needs to be childlike. But why? Man, I could watch my kids, dude. They go outside and they look at the moon. They look at the moon a lot different than I do. Why? Because I've seen the moon five million times, right? I'm like, yep, another full moon. They look at the moon. My son and I, he'll look at the moon and he'll be like, He'd just go outside. Last night, I walked, literally caught him. He goes outside, and he's just standing, and he's staring at the heavens, staring at the heavens, and just going. I look at him, I'm like, yeah, it's going to rain tomorrow. All right. Why? Because I, I, if I'm not careful, I lose my wonder for the coolness and the goodness of God in our lives. And so what is wonder? Wonder is simply a feeling of surprise mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful unexpected, unfamiliar, inexplicable, right? Something beautiful, something unexpected, something unfamiliar. That sounded familiar to me. It says, now there were the same, in the same country, shepherds living in the field. Shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Okay, why are they afraid? Two reasons. Normally, when I'm keeping my flock at night, anybody that's ever been outside at night, pretty calm, pretty still, it's pretty dark. Now, all of a sudden, this bright light going to show up in front of me, and it, it is not like, it must not have been quiet. It must not, because they were like, Whoa, <laughs> right? And so this giant angel, because most of the time when they describe angels, it's very big. So it, it's, they have reason to be scared of this thing, right? And so they're looking and they're saying, no. oh, hey, hey, you see that too, right? Like I'm a, I didn't eat a bad mushroom earlier or something, right? Like you seeing what I'm seeing right now, as long as you seeing what I'm seeing, we could be afraid together. If not, I got to be afraid alone and I don't want to be afraid alone. Okay. So they're sitting there and they're looking at each other and they're going, <laughs> right? Cause they're like almost afraid to look at this thing. And the angel responds to him and says, Hey, and he says, uh, don't be afraid. It says, I bring you, okay? It says, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good tidings right there simply means I bring you recent news. Recent news. Okay, so it, when, it was a, a saying in that time that I'm bringing you the most up-to-date news that's possible. This is greater than Fox. This is, this is the breaking news, okay, of the day. The angel busts down. He's like, dude, I got something nobody else knows. I got the inside scoop. Unto you this day, this day, right now, there's a Savior born. That thing that you've been wondering about, that thing that you've been thinking, when is it going to happen? Again, they were waiting for the Christ, just like we were right? Just like we are now, they were waiting for the Christ. They were waiting for the one that was going to be born, that the government was going to be upon its shoulders, and they were going to be redeemed. In their eyes, they had the wrong vision of what Christ was going to be, but they knew that the one that was to redeem their lives was on the way. They were just looking for it. They were waiting, and they said, okay, man, it's been prophesied. It's been prophesied. All these prophets up until now have been saying, it's on its way, it's on its way, it's on its way, it's on its way. And then we're waiting. It's like today, right? We hear a lot of people prophesying, oh, the Lord's coming back in 1980. And the Lord's coming back in 2022, 2020, 2000, whatever. You know, the reality is he's coming back for a spotless lamb, a spotless lamb. He's not coming back because it gets hard on us. He's coming back when the mature church has a rise. He's coming back when the church itself is mature and ready for him to come back. Not because it gets hard. If that was the case, he would have already came back for China. Because their church is being persecuted every day. He would have already came back for Afghanistan because their church is being persecuted every day. The reality is in the West, we don't even have a clue 
what persecution is. We think because CNN says that God isn't the number one God in the world right now that, oh my God, you, you got to come back and help us, Lord. Give me a break. Come on. The reality is he's going to come back when we mature, not when it gets tough. So that being said, so these men, they're sitting there and they're saying, okay, we got the most recent news today. First, there is born into you this day, the city of David, a savior, baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a major. And suddenly uh, it says there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. He's saying, listen, the man that was promised is going to bring peace is here. Now, that's it. Did he bring peace? Absolutely. He bring absolute peace. But we have to choose to walk in absolute peace. There's the problem. The, the reality is we don't see peace in the fact that God is peace. And he came to bring peace. Because even his angels said, look, I'm bringing peace. He bring peace. But, but there are people out there that have a choice because God in his infinite goodness said, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to give you the ability to choose for yourself what you want. I don't want robots. I don't want angels. I want something greater because in the fact that I have the ability to choose Christ is the fact that I'm greater than an angel, right? Because they just swing around the throne room saying, holy, 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 holy. Why? Because they see the goodness of God. They're constantly surrounded by the goodness. We aren't constantly surrounded by the goodness of God. Watch the news for five minutes. You'll see that there's a lot of not goodness of God out there. Amen. I get to choose to walk in the goodness of God. I get to choose. Now, that doesn't mean other people don't have choices that can affect my life. I get that. I'm 100% understanding of that. But I also understand that in his sovereignty, that I submit my life to his sovereignty. Because if I don't submit my life to his sovereignty, something can happen and I can begin to blame him. I can begin to say, God, why did you do that? I do not have the right as a believer to say, God, why did you do that? Because in that moment that I say, God, why did you do this? I'm saying, God, you don't know my life good enough for me to be able to live my life the way you intended my life to be. Again, I was born to fulfill his will, not the other way around. Not the other way around. We like to say, okay, God, you know what? My will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 no. You were born so that my will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes that means we have to submit to what he wants us to do. That ain't easy. Things happen and I'm like, man, I would have really liked that to work out the other way, Lord. I don't see where you're working this. In his sovereignty, I have to trust him. I have to say, Lord, you're absolute and you know better than I do. I don't get why this happened, but I praise you anyway. I don't get why this happened, but because you were willing to step out of a perfect earth, out of a perfect heaven, into an imperfect earth, he had gates that were made out of pearls. He had streets of gold and decided to come down and be born in a major. Let somebody else change his diapers. You want to talk about getting low. That's as low as you could get. Become a baby. Because you absolutely have to rely on everybody else to be able to do what you know you were already capable of doing. That's tough. So, after they left, you know them, them boys were singing. The multitude of angels started showing up. They started singing and they're going. But as soon as they left, you want to talk about wonder? After the fear had gone, right? Because God created within us the ability to fear first simply for this, to survive. Okay, we get scared and we run or we fight, depending on our reflex, right? They say fight or fly. We get scared and we do one of two things. Why? For survival. Okay, so that's our first natural instinct. God put inside of us, we're going to be scared. Okay, now I either run or I fight. And the shepherds, they didn't have that running ability because their livelihood and everything they needed was right. They had to fight. They were, they were 100% like, I got my staff. I'm ready to bonk some angel head if I need to, right? And so they were sitting there, and they're like, okay, I'm afraid. And he's like, no, 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 you don't have to be afraid. I'm not here against you. 
much like he did with Joshua. Oh, wait, are you for me? Or are you against me? Neither. Okay, I'm good then. You're neutral. All right, I'm, I'm okay. So these, these guys are sitting there and they're going, did you hear that? That thing that we've been hearing about all this time, that we've been waiting for, that promise that had been declared, that prophecy has been fulfilled. And we're getting let know first. Why would the shepherds get to get let know first? One is because they were a shepherd. The shepherd of shepherds was just born, right? The lamb that was perfect, that was being forever given for us, was given. And we say yes to that. And so I want you guys to remember this. Wonderful is simply this. Inspiring delight, pleasure, admiration, extremely good, marvelous. These are the things that are wonderful, right? So first is wonder. They're filled with wonder. I watched my kids be filled with wonder. We should all have that wonder like a child. As we stare into the heavens and say, God, you're so big. God, you're so good. God, you're amazing. And then we move from wonder to wonderful. Why? Because we're created in Christ image and the things that are Christ we should be like Isaiah 9 6 think about this this is 700 years before the birth of Christ 700 years before the birth of Christ listen to what he says for unto us a child is born wait that sounds familiar unto us a son is given again he was given he didn't choose it he didn't it was given it was a gift unto the earth and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called what? Wonderful. Wonderful. Why was that the first word Isaiah used? Because he was wonderful. Now, uh, many a people, and I've seen many a, a posters be put up, wonderful counselor. No, the pernet, p- correct the way to say that is wonderful, comma. Okay? He wasn't just a wonderful counselor. He was wonderful. Stop. He didn't have to be a wonderful counselor. He was just wonderful. I could end the sermon there and just say, Lord, you were wonderful. And so we just go on to say he was wonderful. He was counselor. He was mighty God. He was everlasting father. He was prince of peace. 700 years before the Christ was born, Isaiah is sitting there saying, dude, I may not get to see this. But I'm telling you, there comes a day when this is born unto us. A son is given. I am so grateful that the Lord gave me kids. Okay? I, I, didn't, I didn't really necessarily know. You know, me and Tony got married, and it wasn't long after we had kids. And uh, I, the, when we got, when Tony told me about JJ, I was kind of like, well, okay, you know, here we go. Now, when Josh and Naya came along, I was like, oh, great. I definitely don't know what to do now. But when JJ was born, me and my dad were talking about this, man. They were, my parents were excited. They were going to have grandbabies, right? And they were like, oh, yes. And in a good situation. And it was like me and Tony were trying to live right. And, it, and so it was going to be fun and all of these things. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, Okay, Lord, ready or not, basically. And and even through all of that, I watched my wife, and she never lost her wonder for, for the, because it was growing inside of her. See, a lot of times we lose our wonder because it's not growing inside of us anymore. Simply gone. We just, we're not giving birth to nothing anymore. We're just like, man, I'm going to coast along. I'm going to exist. But the truth is, God's saying, man, I want to light that fire in your heart again. I want to ignite something that makes you so full of wonder toward me again that your lives will never be the same. I'll tell you this. It says, when you lose your wonder, you begin to wander. When you lose your wonder, you begin to wander. Why? The children of Israel, right? They lost their wonder. They were surrounded constantly by the signs of God, and yet they were wandering. (laughs) I'm just going to walk around this mountain, Lord, and one day you'll give us the promised land. And he's going, man, I'll give it to you today if you just get back to me. 
And they're like, do, 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 do. I don't like this bread no more, Lord. Give me some quail. Do, do, do. <laughs> my shoes ain't ran out. These are the best Nikes I ever had in my whole life, Lord. This is amazing. Do, do, do. And that's us a lot of times. The truth is, man, we're just wondering. We just start wondering because we've lost our wonder. And we've lost the fact that, man, I can sit right here, right now, and just be in wonder that you guys are here this morning. Pastor said he wasn't going to be here. You didn't have to be here. That's the reality. He would never know. He, might, he ain't going to see you from there. <laughs> but you understood that it doesn't matter. I just want to be next to my friends. I just want to be next to my family. That's what's important to me. The, the word is going to be given. My life could be forever changed. I need to stay in wonder of the Lord. So, Joseph, you can come up here, man. Uh, next, I want you guys to realize this. Your work should come out of your worship, not your worship out of your work. Your work should come out of your worship. Not your worship out of your work. I hear a lot of people talk about church hurts and a lot of people. And the reality is that church is going to hurt us. It's going to. Why? Because there's people in it. They have their own opinions. They have their own desires. They're, they're trying to do one thing. You're trying to do another. Look, church gives us plenty of opportunities to be hurt. Church gives us plenty of opportunities to, to you know, fail. Church gives us plenty of opportunities to succeed. But at the end of the day, if my work is coming out of my worship, then my king's going to be pleased with it. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, why? We can look at Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha. One sitting down saying, okay, now's the time to worship. I can work in a little bit, but now's the time to worship. I can sit at the feet of the king of kings. She recognized what he was, right? That's why she was sitting at his feet. She recognized the fact that I'm not going to have this soon. I'm listening to the prophecies that he's going to be crucified, right? So I better spend some time with him. And I say to you right now, spend some time with him. Because you don't know what your tomorrow brings. We don't. And we like to think that it's guaranteed it's not. Many of us found that out this year. We had loved ones go away. Didn't get a choice in the matter, right? Didn't get a choice in the matter. But I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm going to love him anyway. I'm going to say COVID's not bigger, heart attack's not bigger, whatever the name was, cancer's not bigger, whatever the name is, doesn't matter, it's not bigger. The fact is, when I let my work come out of my worship, I'm pleasing my king. Because I recognize there's one more important than what I can do. It's what he did for me. It's not about what I can do. It's about what he did through me, for me, because of me, because I'm a son, because I'm a daughter, because there's more to my life than me just existing. Again, his kingdom, his will, not my kingdom, not my will. If we can let those die as Americans, I'm telling you, our lives will be forever changed. But we like our kingdom, our will. I'm not saved by works. I'm saved by faith. My works show me approved, not the other way around. Without Jesus, I could do everything in the world right and it wouldn't be enough. That's the reality of it. So many times we get to the place in life and we say, man, if I could just do this. And he say, no, 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 no. If you just get on your knees, everything would change in a moment. Come on, come on. If you just submit and surrender to your life, everything would change in a moment. The reality is we want it our way. We have become a Burger King society. I want it my way. I want it my way. And he's like... I know better. That's the hard part. That's the hard part about being a believer in Christ is saying, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Even though I think my life would be better this way, you're the ultimate. You know the end from the beginning. 
you know how to get me on path and to my destiny. Even when I think I could take a shortcut, you're saying, nah, I got a better way. I have a better way. Again, consider the ant. I've said this before. When you look at an ant, an ant, I I was watching ants one day because I tried to listen to my Bible and I tried to do what it says. So I just went out and I watched. All right, I'm considering the ant. I'm I'm like watching these ants, right? And I'm going, yep, stupid ants. I got it. They're buzzing along. Worky, 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 worky. Lord, you don't want me just to do that. I know that. I know my life wasn't just about working, working, working. He's like, no, 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 consider. Watch them. Okay. So I'm watching them, watching them. And then I, I got this, I know it was a Holy Spirit download. I'm watching this little ant, and he's got this big old piece of leaf, and he's trying to get it to where he's going, right? He's trying to get where he's going with the other ones. And I'm watching him, and I'm going, he's never going to make it there. He's trying, he's going the wrong way. He's, if he would have stayed on the path over here, he could have made it. I could see that perspective because I could see from above the situation because I had a better perspective, right? The little ant just seen, I'm trying to get this big old leaf through these stupid blades of grass that I can't get to. And I'm going, dude, just go right. Just go right. And it was in that moment Jesus said, that's me telling you, listen, just go right. Listen to me. I got a better perspective. I can see the end. I can see the ant hole. The ant couldn't see the ant hole. He was too covered up by what he was doing. That's why we have to let our worship come out of our, our work come out of our worship, not our work out of our worship, right? Because if we let our worship come out of our work, then all of a sudden, now we got it backwards. Now our work is the most important thing. And he's saying, no, your worship will always be the most important thing that you have on this earth. Your worship will always be the most important thing. 2 Timothy 2.15 simply says this, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In 2022, I feel like God's saying this, If you work and you can divide the truth, I'm going to bless you. America, if you work and you can divide the truth, I'm going to bless you. It's something about that that just came alive in me. And I said, man, why? Because again, I think the Holy Spirit is the greatest businessman to ever live. He can give me insight to things that I never saw. I didn't even, it couldn't even come on my radar. And yet it can come into the canvas of my mind because he's that good. He's that good. Without faith, works are dead. Without faith, works are dead. If I'm not doing it as unto somebody, as unto the king, it doesn't mean anything. Again, he goes back and he says, look, you can do all these cool things. You can raise the dead. Imagine that, raising the dead and not doing it as unto Christ. That's crazy for me to believe. But because his truths and his pers- and his his grace on our life is so good that your giftings could be raising the dead. And yet you could do that gift without him. Because he's that good. Your gift could be making money and you could do it without him. There's plenty of those. We've seen plenty of those in the world. And not do a thing for him. So I just declare to you, don't lose your wonder because you'll begin to wonder. How do I know that? Let me lose my wonder for my wife. What happens? My eyes begin to wander. The next thing could come along. My eyes will begin to shift. My eyes will begin to go elsewhere. When I lose my wonder for my job, my eyes go elsewhere. When I begin to lose my eye for my wonder for my kids, my eyes go elsewhere. Man, I could be doing this. Don't wonder this year. Don't get lost in wonder this year. Wonder. Because, man, God is so big. He's without limits. 
without limits. We like to put God in a box. We like to say, God, you're about this big, right? Fit your life into this. And he said, son, you have no idea. The earth can't even capacitate who I am. I hold the earth, not the other way around. Okay, and you trying to put me in your little mind's box. Quit. Let me blow your mind. Let me exceed your expectations because he's the only one that can. Men are going to fail you, but God can't even in his goodness fail you if you just open your eyes and submit to him. Now we're going to think, oh, well, God, that didn't work out. And he said, no, you don't understand. I didn't fail you. I'm just preparing what I had prepared for you. There's something greater if you just submit your life to me. This morning, let us not to forget our wonder. The fact that Jesus Christ could be come out of heaven, come into the earth in swaddling clothes. All that is, just cut up clothes. It's an it's a expression. There's a place where they use swaddling clothes for the sacrificial lamb. That's a lot of what Pastor talked about a couple weeks ago. But the reality is he, he had a humble birth. No matter how you look at it, he had a humble birth in a humble place. Why did he do that? To let every man know, it doesn't matter where you were born, you can fulfill the destiny he had on your life. To not give a man an excuse or a way out of doing what he called you to do. So we couldn't say, well, yeah, but God, you had to know. I was born in a major in swaddling clothes. Now go. Now go. Quit letting your past dictate your future. Because it doesn't dictate your future. Your right now dictates your future. My present dictates my tomorrow. Not my yesterday. My yesterday set me up for right now. But I got to let that go. And I say, Lord, I can let it go and just say yes to you. So this morning, I just pray that our wonder comes back to us, that our yes comes back to us, that, that our hearts and our, our, our minds come back to us and saying, Lord, I want to live a life fully submitted to you. As we get ready for 2022, I just pray that this, th this word comes to your mind, that, Lord, I want to get lost in your wonder. I want to get lost in just how big you are. That, Lord, you made the heavens and the earth. That you made this earth good enough for me to enjoy. That you made this earth good enough for me to be able to have life and life more abundant. That it wasn't just because. I wasn't just be created because this dude and this woman came together. But you had a purpose on my life. Yes, it looked like humble origins. But you had a purpose on my life. And I can fulfill every single thing that you put in my life to fulfill. I'm grateful for that this morning. I pray pastor's enjoying his time with Kenneth. Pastor, we love you. We miss you. I promise you he'll be back next week. But I do pray this, that we don't lose our wonder for God and how big he is. And that in his goodness, because why? It's the goodness of God that draws men unto him. It's the goodness of God that draws. I pray that every person around the world, I, I prayed with my kids last night, and I say, Lord, I just pray that the goodness of God is being so displayed over earth on Christmas that people are being drawn back to you. That people are being drawn back to you. So we'll pray right now. Lord, I just thank you for every person in here. I just pray that we caught something this morning, that Lord, that they would chew up the meat and spit out the bones. If there's something they didn't like, that's okay. I just pray that they caught something this morning in recognizing, Lord, it's the wonder of God that causes us to go back to you, to try to seek you out. The three wise men staring at a star that they had never seen before, recognizing what is that star and where is it leading me? i got to follow it. Lord, I just pray right now that, Lord, the goodness of God would so be on display this Christmas season that the hearts of men and women around the world, not just in America, not just where you want it to be, Lord, but, Lord, every single face of the earth, every single face of the waters, they, Lord, would see your goodness and they would be drawn back to you because we know this, that every good gift was passed down from the Father of light. You gave me Christmas yesterday, not my friends, not my family. You gave me Christmas, Jesus. 
because when you decided 2,000 years ago that I was enough, that your life was enough to be put on a cross for me and me alone, if that's what it took, I say thank you for the ultimate gift, for the greatest commodity on earth to be on display, for it to be a ransom for my life. Thank you. I'm not worthy, yet you said you're worthy. I'm not going to argue, Lord. You know better than me. But I pray that my life would be approved, that my life would be one that I just feel in the wonder of God, that I would open my word again and just begin to be wonder of God, that I could see it like movies in my mind and just be in wonder of God, knowing that you could part the heavens, that you could part the seas, that, Lord, even something that was wet, I could walk across on dry land. How can that be? Because you're so big. You're without limits. Let me not to limit you in 2022, but Lord, let me to say, exceed my expectations because only you can. I love you, Father God, and I pray that 2022 for the little country church and for every church around the world would be a blessed one. That we would grow our hunger again, that we would grow our wonder again, and we would get lost in you. That it wouldn't be about my will, but it would be about your will. It wouldn't be about my kingdom, but it would be about your kingdom. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let my eyes to see your kingdom this year, not my kingdom. I give you all the praise for that in Jesus' name. If we could get the servant leaders to come.